uh, I mean, immediately addressed. But let's talk about something that uh, is very interesting and, of course, happened earlier today. The Wheel of Justice has reached its conclusion in the mother case of a postgraduate student of the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilaife, Timothy Adegoke. It happened in two, two, uh, November 2021. The Osho State High Court has found Ramon Adedoi, the founder of Oduduwa University, guilty of the mother of Adegoke. The judgment delivered by Justice Adekpe Leojo, the court sentenced Adedoye, who is also the owner of the Hilton Hotel, to death by hanging. Justice Ojo held that Adedoye and two of his workers, based on the circumstances of the case established by the prosecuting counsel, Femi Falano, are found culpable of conspiracy to commit murder and unlawful killing of the deceased. A tragic story. Uh, a very sad one, uh, the one that had lots of um, uh, yeah, yes, sadness yeah. and uh, tears around it. A master student who only checked into the hotel, for, I mean, uh, to, to get some rest, yeah. and it turned into it an a very over, nasty overnight day. rest. Uh, let's talk about first the process that led to this uh, landmark um, decision by the um, Oshun State um, yeah. High Court. Yeah. Uh, take us through the journey from well, November 2021 up until this moment. There were some times that there were fears that perhaps the, 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 the accused could escape justice. Yeah. Well, actually, the, for those who live around that area, the hotel is notorious, according to them, for disappearances. Maybe I can use that. But this one was so obvious that I could not be denied. Because the first thing the hotel did was to deny that it was not even a lodger. Until luckily the guy told people where he was going. So they have a record of his movements and when he checked in. That is the first room for suspicion. The second room, of course, was that every effort was made to make sure this did not go to trial. Even at the point the police in that area were assumed to be complicit in whatever is causing the delay. But I must commend those who took the battle personally. Some young men on social media decided to dedicate their time to this. And the, and the lawyers mm. also went out of their way. Because well, sometimes it's not really convenient. Because sometimes the man will not be, for, for the man to even be caught, took a while. And then a lot of postponements, the normal technical aspects of the case. But the judge did very well. Because, like I said, the evidence was overwhelming. Mm. Because normally, three things. Anybody who knows anything about business is the first thing is that if something like this happens on your premises, you must immediately report it. Report it. Mm. That's the first thing. Right. Why were you trying to yeah. bury the person? Yeah. Why? Why you well, without the informing person? the police? Mm. They're denying that the person was ever on the premises. There's a long way to go. I'm sure it's going to appeal, but this, as of today, gives hope to the common man. You know, the. Uh, are they doing um, shocked me by the way he went about this matter. He refused to get into the dock for his testimony to be taken. So what is the meaning of that? <laughs> Did you see yourself as too big? Bigger than the law? That they can't ask you questions. You are on trial for God's sake for murder. And you said you are not going to go into the dock. You are not going to give your testimony. Then, as the judge said, it means that you agreed that uh, you are guilty. The, the charges, I mean, you yes. accept the charges. Already, these are damning allegations made against you. And the facts were, uh, were really startling. Something close to a prima facie evidence was provided. Yet, you didn't think you should defend yourself in any way. I even had not arm robbers. When they put them into the dock, they won't even say they are not going to the dock. This is real. And when they put them uh, uh, in the dock, they would do their best to defend themselves. To say, look, 
I'm a, I, uh, you can even plead for leniency uh, uh, and all that. The lawyer will now follow through to plead that look, this is a first offender, please. Mm. Um, Temper justice with Yes. Please. Well, in this case, you refuse to, to get into the dock. The dock. Lawyer was now making All the alibi. defense on your, on your behalf. Nobody <laughs> will listen because have you even shown remorse? Before your lawyer began to, uh, to, plead. To, to plead on your behalf. No. You that they are pleading on your behalf, your conduct must show that indeed you deserve some level of clemency. But a lawyer uh, 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 making alibi on behalf of somebody who by his conduct was clearly unrepentant. I mean, it's wrong. The woman, the girl who received the guest on the day used her phone to photograph the entry. I showed clearly that, the okay, ledger. this person is yes, lodged, uh, yes, uh, lodged with us. Mm. They told her to delete it. She told the court that she was told to delete that evidence. All they were trying to do was um, deny that this person lodged with them. And the police, at earlier seven, the CCTV was uh, va uh, vandalized hmm. so that the evidence, the pictorial uh, video evidence of the guy being uh, in their premises would not be found. But at the end of the day, the, the, the evidence was startling. You went, buried the guy, you are the one who gave instruction that they should go and bury the, the, the guy. There was no reason to bury the guy. There was no reason. How did he die? Give your testimony. Explain what you know. We did not explain to the court. So he left the court with no choice than to, uh, to enter this kind of judgment uh, against him. And um, I just hope that justice will be served from top to bottom because I've been in this situation before. I've seen this situation before. Let me, say, let me not say I've been. You know, I've seen this kind of situation before with ST, the soap maker. Within his premises, young men were being murdered, their eyes gouged out, gouged out yeah. you know, in clear yeah. cases of ritual killing. But at the end of the day, the pressure, because Nigeria's rich people do not believe that the law is meant for them. And when one of them gets caught for one infraction or another, they will pile pressure on law enforcement agents. Before you know it, that person will walk free. There were families of the victims sometimes. Yes. ST, I mean, ST eventually um, didn't die in the hands of the law. Let me frame it in that way. Mm. But he died uh, naturally. But he never recovered from. He used to be a businessman with flourishing... Uh, um, Soap business. ST was uh, uh, ST Mario, you remember? Uh, I was I was hoping you would avoid that. <laughs> that, <laughs> that. But uh, GKB, before we go on a break quickly to look at other issues on the show today, uh, uh, BKU uh, has rightly mentioned a part where the elite in court do think they could get away with um, offenses that they term as uh, uh, common men offenses or they are untouchable. Yeah. What? impact would this judgment have on the overall sentiment that uh, we are above the law? And secondly, the hospitality business in Nigeria, what should be done to ensure that things like this do not happen, where hospitality business owners use their facilities for other things aside from the basic purpose which they are approved for by the government? Now, the Board for Hospitality, I think part of their recommendation, one of their rules, was the fact that you must be affiliated with a nearby hospital. There must be medical facilities available for your guests, immediately the 
Let's arrange them to refer them to the government hospital. That has always been the standard. We did not start the hotel business in the world. So it's not really a new thing that people have not done before. Even within the premises, they will show you areas, can guess first aid, numbers can call, 999 and all that. I don't think the hospitality has a problem. Problem is the one you mentioned. It's about the Nigerian elites, including some, <laughs> some, some people who go and uh, do something, even in traffic. And they will tell you, I'll call your governor, you know who I am. Mm. It's that, that level of mentality, level of entitlement that can do no wrong. Don't forget that we are talking about a man who almost became the other. That's how powerful he is in effect. He was one of the mm. people contesting I, I mm. at that level. Odua, Odua University is at the core of Ife Gates. Once you get to that junction, it's a land expanse of land mm. that it took over. And the hotel, of course, Hilton is also very known by the student population of OAU. Mm. So somebody like that to just assume it's going to be strange to him that they could even arrest him, mm. put him not to yeah. put him on, in the dock. The very idea of being that in the dock. It doesn't, you cannot but really complain. bigger people like him have entered the dock. Yeah. Ashwajibola Ahmed, you know, in the dock. who is president today, was put in the dock. I know. Um, Bola Saraki, number three man in the country, put in the dock. So it's, a, it's a mindset. So what are we talking about? Obasanjo, former president of Nigeria, put in the dock. Multiple times. So not people, people who are much bigger than him have gone into the dock to defend it's themselves. Of, of but but, but where, do we, where do the elites, or so-called elites, get this... Uh, idea from that they are bigger than the law. No, I mean, they go outside of the country and, and they behave. conform with every mm. law and set by this country. Behave. But we yeah. come back to our own country mm, and speak on it. our own rules. That's Nigeria. I mean, where do we get? Where do, how did we get here? And no, how can we the cop, system here? How can we cop that uh, the system negative is mentality? Defective. The system Abroad, yeah. is defective. We do not apply the laws strictly here. A politician. Most politicians have thugs. Most big politicians they have thugs that are on their payroll. When you arrest any one of them, as a police commissioner, you will see pressure. What the other man will call pressure. You will see pressure until you, you, you leave the person. You know, so the law, uh, they know that law enforcement is weak in our country. It's not as if we don't have law. We have excellent laws. Look at some of the uh, netwits who are abusing people on social media, lying against people on social media. It's not as if we do not have laws to take care of such people. A lot of them can easily go to jail. Cyber stalking, cyber bullying, mm -hmm. cyber banditry that these guys are doing. It's not as if the law is not there to take care of them. But how many times do people get arrested for lying against people on social media? This is what they exploit. They exploit the system. The system is weak. During COVID, people based abroad, they came to Nigeria, and they were partying. They were arrested at nightclubs when there was a lockdown. A lockdown, when they were supposed to be in their homes. Oh. They will never do it in the UK. They will never do it in Norway, in Finland. Not to talk of China. <laughs> Maybe, uh, we, I, I saw a video shot in uh, Italy when they told everybody to, to, to they beat the hell out of those guys. Those of those who stayed away. Those of those who are walking around. Even from Pakistan, somewhere, they were coming from mosque. They beat the hell out of them. Because at that time, Religion did not uh, uh, get in the way of enforcement of the law. It was supposed to stay at the safety of everybody. Yeah. Yes. In, in uh, Rwanda, the president ordered the, the military to shoot on sight. Anybody found roaming around during the lockdown. You know? So chances are that our people, if they go to Rwanda, they will not misbehave like that. Absolutely. But yeah. Well, of course, we'll get there in Nigeria, and of course, we'll be. Don't forget, to... it's Nigeria here that uh, a big man will delay a plane from taking off mm. because he's waiting for Ibaba to cut his head. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, we'll, we'll get this. We'll right. be the first one to get to the airport when it's abroad. <laughs>
<laughs> that was not it for his life. Well, we'll get it right someday. And of course, the new culture of um, doing things right is one of the things that the president, uh, Abul Ahmed Tinubu, also emphasized in his inaugural message at his inauguration yesterday. We'll take a break now, and of course, uh, we'll be back with more.